let's talk about expiration handling, a very important concept when it comes to projecting the market value of an option book across future terms. The easiest way to start off is to consider a simple example. Let's assume today is January 25th and we're working with an arbitrary stock trading around 100. Our book is long 100 shares and short two call contracts for February 19th at 105. If we wanted to model the projected change in the market value of this book at or before expiration, it would be relatively straightforward. Given a range of prices, we would know what the stock and intrinsic value of the options would be, and we could plot that out as shown here. However, what happens when we want to model the book for a future date that's beyond an expiration date for one of the options in our book? In our example scenario, we would need to decide how the short call options would be treated if they were in the money as we approached expiration. This is where the expiration handling feature comes in. It allows us to easily specify how we want our in-the-money calls to be treated on February 19th. The first strategy we cover is called cash settle. The cash settle strategy assumes that any in-the-money options will be bought or sold just prior to expiration for their intrinsic value. Since options are never exercised or assigned under this strategy, any position you have in shares will not be affected. The second expiration strategy available is always exercise. As its name indicates, this strategy will never close out an option position, which means anything in the money will either be exercised or assigned. The final expiration strategy is exercise if covered. As you may have guessed, this is a hybrid strategy that allows options to be exercised or assigned if there is a position in the underlying that supports it, only stock. If not, then the options are cash settled. Now let's walk through how each of these strategies would be employed at expiration for our example book. First, we'll start off with cash settle. Using this strategy, the in the money calls would be bought back and the book would be left long 100 shares. If we use the always exercise strategy instead, then both calls would be allowed to be assigned. The first would call away our 100 shares and the second would force a short 100 shares. If we use the exercised if covered strategy, then the first call would be allowed to call away our shares and the other would be bought back to close. One additional benefit of the expiration handling feature is that it allows you to easily model how each strategy would impact a book at a future date. In this case, you can easily see that the performance is identical for each strategy if the stock stays below the call strike. However, if the stock rises above the call strike by expiration, the cash settle strategy would result in a bullish position whereas the always exercise strategy would result in a bearish position. Keep in mind that these particular results are due to the book we're using in this example, so it will vary. This example also brings to light one of the key considerations when working with the different price path modeling strategies. You'll notice that there's a pivot point right around 109.21. This is because we're using the linear progression price modeling here, and the highest terminal price it reaches that involves options expiring worthless is at 109.21. Above that price, the options would be exercised in one of the strategies, resulting in a short underlying position. However, this doesn't tell the whole story because the linear progression pricing is very specific in how it develops its price paths. To get the full picture, here's the Monte Carlo pricing strategy overlaid on each chart. Now you can see that there are a variety of different outcomes that can occur when the stock moves less predictably. In the cash settle chart, one thing that stands out is that there are multiple price paths that end right around the 108 terminal price and show different returns. This is because they pass through the February 19th milestone at different prices. In the always exercise chart, you'll notice the X pattern, which is because the book leaves February 19th either long 100 shares or short 100 shares, depending on the price. There are a few important things to keep in mind when working with these expiration handling strategies. First, no liquidity premium is factored in to closing transactions. As a result, the returns are slightly more optimistic than they would be in a real market scenario. Second, transaction costs are not factored in when closing positions. And finally, these strategies do not account for the early exercise or assignment of options. To recap, in this video we covered expiration handling, an important concept when projecting the market value of option books across expirations. As always, good luck and good hunting.